What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. So many of you guys have asked me to make this video before, at least touch on the time that I lost $30,000 in an options trade over the course of, I believe it was about four or five days, and it was last year. So if you guys are a part of our private group or in some of our private mentoring and classes, you guys are well aware of this trade. We've kind of discussed it many of times. For those of you guys on YouTube, probably, you know, a few of you guys know about it. Many haven't heard of the whole situation, the whole trade. So I'm going to walk you guys through the chart and kind of explain what happened and, and really kind of my thought process behind the trade that ultimately resulted in losing about $30,000 over four days, which you can imagine felt like shit. So let's get into sharing the screen. All right, so here we are. This is exactly where I took the trade, right here. And well, let me zoom in a little bit and then we'll redo that. Okay, so I took the trade right here at this price point at about 280 on that specific day, all right? And if you noticed, entering at 280 that same day, it continued to decline and I was long biased. And then the following day had a really bad day. And then we kind of bounced over the course of the next couple days, all right? So ideally, if you look at the market, right? Every time we kind of gotten beaten down, had a bad day, we tend to kind of bounce, right? Kind of bounce, bounce you know, pull back, bounce. So that was generally the, the typical trend that the market had been doing. We'd come down, we'd bounce, we'd pull back, we'd bounce, we'd pull back, we'd bounce, pull back, bounce, right? So at this point, I had already kind of watched the market stall out here for a second, and we were pulling back, and we kind of dumped right down into what appeared to be a relatively good support area. We bounced here once, bounced here twice, and had kind of some nice consolidation in this top here, this top here, kind of going across. So I'm like, all right, this 280 seems like a relatively strong area to kind of pinpoint as a bottom entry for a bounce maybe over the next week or couple days. Uh, so what I ended up doing was taking an options trade. Now I want to say that I bought 100 contracts, but I honestly can't remember. It might have been a little bit more than that. Maybe it was 150 or 200 contracts. Um, and I believe at the time when I did the options trade, I bought the options or I bought the calls, I bought calls and I was buying a few outside of the money. So I was buying the options a little bit cheaper than if I was buying right at the money or an in the money call. If you're familiar with options, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with options, again, that's okay. Uh, but ideally, what I was doing is buying calls, I was bullish on the market to bounce over the next couple days, maybe the week. So we had waited on this really big down day in the market. I picked the $280 price point to kind of start buying some calls around, anticipating over the next couple of days we would end up bouncing. And if I was right, then of course it probably would have been like a 30 to 60, you know, maybe even $80,000 winning trade rather than a $30,000 losing trade. All right. So what I ended up doing was, again, I bought in, and let me zoom in again. I want to get us a little bit closer. Okay, there we go. Let's take a step back. Again, so what I ended up doing was buying right here at about 280. That's not what we want. We want this. So again, I seen this top here and old resistance becomes a new support. So we had two tops there and then we had a bounce here, bounce there. And I'm like, okay, this is, there's a good chance we're going to bounce right off this 280 for like the next two days, maybe three days, get a nice kind of bottom bounce trade. So I ended up getting long, a couple hundred contracts there at 280. And then, of course, as you can see, later in that day, it continued to decline. Let me zoom in again. So we get in long at 280. Next thing you know, we close lower on the day from where it entered. Then the following day, we have a really bad red day. The following day, we get a nice little up move. The following day, we're kind of stagnant. And then we bounced. So, you know, at this point, down here, I was down, you know, about $30,000. I was pretty much down the total capital that I was using on that trade. And then the following day, you know, it goes lower, you know, we're kind of hanging out and then we start to bounce. So, you know, I get long here and I get smoked, right? Down tons of money. So at this point, I think the total investment I had in the trade was like 35 grand or 34 grand. I ended up cutting the loss at about 29,000. Okay. So I basically got smoked. Okay. So, once I'd entered and we dropped down a little bit, you know, I didn't really want to panic sell out. I might as well being down that much, pretty much the full amount of capital at that point, you know, logic is, well, you might as well not even sell or close out the position because, well, you're pretty much have already lost the entire amount you could lose on the trade. 
So at this point, you're really the logical thing is to just do the hope thing. Well, we might as well just kind of hope it comes back over the next couple of days. Then maybe it will result in a break even trade. Maybe you could take it off for less of a loss than it already was. Again, what's the point? It's pretty much do or die at this point. You already lost all your money. So again, we start to bounce up the next couple of days. Uh, and when we had this bounce, right, that's really the bounce that I was looking for to happen the following day or relatively sooner than it than it did. So I got in long here thinking the next day we'd have one of these green pushes or maybe just a red day and then we'd bounce like we were kind of doing. And if that happened, it would have resulted in a nice profitable trade. But instead, next day we get a, just a terrible down day and then we get a couple days of really just kind of some consolidation and then we get a bounce. At this point, when we bounce back up to the 280, I was down about 14,000, right? So I'd almost, you know, I, I pretty much, you know, made back half of the money I'd lost. And at that day, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should take this trade off, right? If I take this trade off here, then, you know, I get back 15,000. It's not as bad as a trade. And I still had some time to wait on the trade. But, you know, I was like, well, let's stick it out, see if we get a little bit of another bounce. So I wait the following day. And you can see we started to push up a little bit early in the morning, right at the open, you know, close to we kind of push up and we come down. So at this point, when we kind of pushed up this day, couldn't break. I waited one more day. Following day, we started to roll over a little bit and break down. At this point, I knew that the amount of time that I had left on my options till expiration date, the likelihood that we would come up and I'd be able to reclaim the loss or even make a profit was pretty much slim to none. So at this point, I was back down to about a $29,000 loss and the whole trade was about like 34,000. So at this point, it's like, well, I could just hold them knowing that I'm not going to be winning and I'll most likely lose everything or I can just save myself like $5,000 of the money that, again, I had in total used. So at this point, I'm like, well, might as well take the trade off and just pocket, you know, my $6,000 so that I don't just completely lose all of my money on the trade. Okay. So again, you know, looking back now, of course, we could say a million things as to why I shouldn't have took the trade, what I could have done better. Uh, and ultimately, I think, you know, some of the main important key takeaways is, you know, on that specific day, I was so used to seeing the market bouncing, you know, a couple days after or the next day after on a lot of these moves, right? Down, bounce, bounce, bounce. And I was like, this is going to happen again, right? So I was going based off of how the market had been performing previously to predict what I want to do with this trade. Um, and arguably, I wasn't wrong for thinking that, but again, the market can always teach you something new all the time. In looking back now, I mean, there was a massive bearish divergence, you know, it was coming off an all-time high move. And again, that's that hindsight 2020 playing in, um, but it was more so what it was like after I'd lost the money, right? So after that move had happened, and I lost, you know, basically the $30,000, I was in this really, you know, emotional spot for the next couple, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, because you just came off of losing $30,000, you know, and the first instinct that you have naturally after something like that is I want to win it back. And more oftentimes than not, the first thing you're going to do is kind of search around for a trade and try and swing for another big win to make back that loss. But after trading for so long, I had known that that's not the approach that you want to take that's generally going to lead to another big loss. So imagine taking a $30,000 loss and then trying to hit another big trade and then taking like a $10,000 or another $20,000 loss. Now you're at a $50,000 loss. That's not easy to bounce back from because emotionally you get beaten down and then you start to second guess yourself and you start to doubt yourself in second guessing in doubtfulness can lead to terrible trades. And an example of this would be, if you're ever kind of doubting yourself when trading, it goes something like this. You see a move, or, or let me rephrase it, let's take a step back. Let's say you've been trading really, really well, really, really well, making you know good profits, good returns, winning more than losing. And all of a sudden you take this really big loss, something like $30,000. I mean, who would do that? What an idiot. I mean, uh, just what a loser, just kidding. But imagine taking a $30,000 loss. Hmm rough. Okay. Next day you come into the market and go, well, I just came off a $30,000 loss. Do I really want to keep losing? No. So I need to be, you know, pretty picky with what I'm going to trade now. And I don't want to take the loss. So the market opens, you're looking at your trades for the day and you know, you go to take, uh, uh, you go to take a trade. And next thing you know, 
you're seeing the setup and it all looks good, but you have this feeling of hesitation. So instead of clicking the buy button, or if you're going short, clicking the sell button. So instead of clicking buy, you're starting to hesitate. When you start to hesitate, the good entry or best or better entry will slowly start to pass and it will end up coming to a worse entry or a not so good entry. So your hesitation or doubtfulness or doubting yourself leads to hesitation for taking the trade. And then when you go into hesitating, then you're going to start taking the trade a little bit late, which then will result in you buying higher in the move, which means you're more susceptible to being put into a pullback that can result in you taking your trade off. So again, all these emotional triggers end up kind of developing into an unknowingly losing mentality because you can't see it and you can't you know see the future. So again, all these mental triggers that happen end up kind of snowballing into a losing mentality. Not that you're an actual losing trader or that you should be losing, it's that your emotions can play a really interesting effect, right? And it can and eventually kind of push you into a losing mentality. And that is sort of what happened after that $30,000 loss was I started to hesitate on my entries and start to second guess some of the trades I was taking the following days and weeks after because I was so nervous of not wanting to give away any more money and start to win back the money. It wasn't that I was aiming for big wins or really trying to hit these monstrous wins. I was actually just going for small base hits because I knew if I would just hit enough smaller trades, take less size, eventually we get back to winning over those trades and getting back into the green in terms of the money that was given or taken away from me on that stupid trade. So again, you know, after that $30,000 loss, you really get beaten down or after a big loss, anybody who has traded for a long enough time has probably made, you know, an irrational trade or a bad trade and taken a pretty big beating on it. And they will be able to tell you the same. Once you acknowledge or you have or experienced a trade like that, it really starts to play with some of the emotions. And that's what really develops a, a trader over the long haul is all those good wins and all those big losses really molds you into the trader who you will become uh, eventually. And so a lot of people have asked me to come out and do this video and kind of share my experience with it. And you know, ultimately the one main thing that I could say overall that that trade <laughs> really taught me is a few things. If you're gonna go crazy with some options, boy, you better be right, <laughs> okay? You could also, you know, hedge your positions. There's a couple other things you can do, but ultimately what it comes down to is understanding the risk involved. I knew what the risk was, right? And I was ready for the reward, right? I was ready to take a big win, but I was also knowingly willing to accept a big loss, right? If you're anybody's an options trader, you know well as I do, if you're gonna take a couple hundred contracts long or short on anything, you know well as I do that the you know, opposite side of that trade could be equally as bad or equally as big of a loss. Okay, so again, just want to come out, share my experience on that trade. Um, and, and really just walk you through what that was, you know, I, I wanted to get long on this market for a bounce there for a big win, hoping that the market would kind of recover back to highs relatively soon. And it resulted in me, you know, getting crushed. But I will mention, I, I will mention that when I got sh when I got long here, and got crushed and then we kind of bounced and struggled this is when i was in a trade for you know about a week and i started to feel the weakness in the market and if anybody's watched one of my robin hood account videos uh, i actually shorted the market once i felt the negative pressure and the resistance i got long here and got smoked right then i seen this come up and we're hitting all these resistances and we weren't, we weren't breaking down so i actually started getting short the market here and short the market here and just before the breakdown and I ended up covering up a short position down here and ended up crushing it and pretty much making back all the money that I had lost throughout that one trade there. But again, my one big trade right here that resulted in $30,000 loss took me from here, here, all the way to there to make it back. So again, if you think about it, this one little trade in here lost $30,000, the trade from here here, here, all the way down to there is what got me back to, you know, basically a $30,000 win. So again, look at how small the time frame was to lose 30 grand and then how long it took me to make it back. Because instead of taking the massive position I did on this trade, I didn't take a massive position here or here or here. I was taking relatively smaller positions because I knew that if I was wrong again, I'd be resulting in a really big loss. So I downsized the position and I held for a longer time. 
So I made a big win over the course of a little bit of a longer time frame, of course, a bigger move. Uh, but you can see how that mentality plays a role in, you know, your future decisions when trading. So again, a lot of people wanted me to make this video, kind of talk about that experience, uh, but that is ultimately one of, or arguably the worst trade or loss that I've taken over the course of just a couple day time or just in one transaction uh, in terms of trading. Uh, we've also had really great wins, but again, a lot of people wanted me to share this with you. Hope you guys learned something new or just wanted to hear or me talk about that experience. And as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Feel free to thumbs up the video, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Everybody take care and have a good day.